Religion and or spirituality are critical components of human existence. Every human group seemingly has advanced some form of it. It's one of the few things that separates us from other life on the planet. As a student of African history, it was immediately apparent that over time the topic had become adulterated. We're just now beginning to revisit outdated models. However, when it comes to understanding African religion, I'm of the opinion that we're pretty much still in the Stone Age. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was. Sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. And my cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. <laughs> that's real. I mean, I, I, I and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that in that manner as well. Purchase now at herbalresults.net. Throughout the years, people have asked me to do more videos on traditional African religion. It's rare that I directly cover the topic. The truth is, the more I research traditional African religions the more I realized how lacking the scholarship was. I could not in confidence present any information that was likely to be outdated or misunderstood. And that leads us to our topic. To begin, depending on your perspective, the ideas propagated by non-African observers concerning traditional African religion can be seen as lies or simply misunderstandings. In truth, it's probably a mixture of both. Traditional African religion is diverse and complex. Compounded with this is the fact that it's been demonized, misinterpreted, and improperly categorized. That being said, it's critical that you take caution with this video. I've tried my best to collect information from African scholars, but they can only give so much as there is no pan-African traditional religion. And so, they've documented the distortions of traditional African religions and provided explanations to the best of their knowledge. Please keep in mind that this video cannot guarantee a proper African lens concerning traditional African belief systems, primarily because it's an extremely difficult and stratified topic. Also, keep in mind that this video is not a promotion of traditional African religions or any other religion for that matter. Let's begin. I think that disclaimer is the perfect segue into one of the principal lies regarding traditional African religion, and that is robbing it of its complexity. In their attempt to understand indigenous African religions, foreign observers did three things. Simplify the beliefs they encountered, position it into an easy target, and then manufacture a vilification campaign. When European travelers in the 18th and 19th centuries first began to interact with traditional African religions, they viewed it as a proxy to the African inferiority narrative. In other words, since Africans were inferior, being simple-minded and less complex, then the religion they created must also reflect this. This backward thinking has completely adulterated the study of traditional African religion. As the American Academy of Religion observed in 1993 in its spotlight on teaching African religions in American universities within the field of religious studies, African religion still remains a residual category variously characterized as traditional, primal, primitive, 
oral, and non-literate. African religions are defined as antithetical to world religions and are viewed as less complex, less reflective, less theoretical, and most important, less moral and less spiritual. One of the ways foreign observers have managed to paint traditional African religion as less complex was by utilizing the ubiquitous category of fetish. The term fetish was a useful way to simplify, position, and attack traditional African religion. Aside from its negative connotation, at times, it also erroneously branded some traditional African deities. African deities, divinities, or gods are innumerable, and the Daomian, Nigerian, and Haitian pantheons are particularly vast. The attributions, roles, and importance of these divinities in society vary considerably as well. Known as the Vodon among the Fon people of Benin Republic, Orisha, Ocha among the Nago, and the Yoruba ethnic groups of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Benin Republic, Tron among the Ewe people of the Republic of Ghana and Togo Republic, and Loa or Elwa among the Haitians of the Caribbean islands, these African divinities were erroneously called fetishes by the European invaders. As a result, the Vodon religion was cynically referred to as fetishism, and the Vodonsi, the adept or initiated follower of the Vodon religion, was called fetishist by Westerners. Aside from the fetish labeling of African deities, part of the complexity is reflected in our misunderstanding of African monotheism. In the Western world, our view of monotheism usually resides within the context of the Abrahamic religions, and anything outside that specific framework cannot qualify as monotheism. However, scholar Kaitazua Luyaluka makes a strong case against that. He claims that we can't use Western theism as a yardstick for other religions. He points to the existence of what he calls hierarchical monotheism in traditional African religion. Many foreign observers misinterpret traditional African religion because they don't understand the hierarchical monotheism present in many African spiritual beliefs. According to this model, many African religions have a transcendent supreme being at the very top, then an actual creator of the universe, then spirits, and finally ancestral intercessors, all of whom are intrinsically tied to the supreme being. Upon reading this, I was immediately reminded of the concept of the Trinity within the Christian religion, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all being one. In a similar matter in regards to many traditional African religions, the creator of the universe, various spirits, and the ancestors are all agents of the supreme source. Some scholars actually identified this hierarchical monotheism within the traditional belief of the Bakongo people, yet they abandoned the use of a monotheistic label. However, despite their unanimity, these authors never defined the Bakongo as monotheistic, a reluctance due to the difference between the Congo theism and the Western one in which God is one, creator, and supreme. For clarity, many traditional African religions have a supreme being, but the actual creator of the universe is another agent that derived from the supreme. The Western or Abrahamic concept is that God is the creator and the supreme. I think scholar Deji Ayakboyan puts it best. The question of polytheism or monotheism is not an African question and has limited value in trying to understand how Africans came to view their lives and those of their neighbors. One does not have to draw sharp distinctions between those who believe in many deities and those who purport to believe in one deity to gain an appreciation of the complexity of the African way of life. In fact, most Africans accept a belief in one creator deity, although there may be many spirits. Thus, in reality, this is similar to the later forms of religion, which followed the African pattern in many respects. Africans were the first humans to conceive of a concept of monotheism. In the Western world, 
monotheistic belief is reflexively thought of as a more legitimate or mature form of religious thinking. This likely derived from Eurocentric ideology. The irony here is that monotheism originated in Africa. The ignorance to and the omission of this fact by foreign observers and later authors constitutes one of the biggest lies about traditional African religion. Scholar Christopher Ehret identifies Nilo-Saharan speaking Africans as the originators of monotheistic thought. Concerning their religious thinking, this is what Dr. Ehret has to say. At the core of the belief system was a single divinity, or God. Divinity was identified metaphorically with the sky, and the power of divinity was often symbolized by lightning. There was no other category of spirits or deities. In some more recent versions of the Sudanic religion, divinity might choose to manifest itself to human beings in the form of seemingly particular lesser spirits, but the followers of Sudanic religion understood those spirits to be just other guises of divinity. So from this analysis, we're beginning to see a clear pattern. Spirits within the context of many traditional African religions were oftentimes congruent with monotheism. Diversity of African thought is a factor. However, the aforementioned motto seems to be the general rule. Admittedly, classifying some traditional African religions as monotheistic would take a Herculean effort. However, the way Africans understood God should not be regulated by Western theism. African traditional religion and Africans' vision of the nature of God have been defined overwhelmingly by outsiders. Almost five centuries of colonial and Eurocentric scholarship have sanctified concepts and paradigms that have largely contributed to the distortion of the African vision of God. Categories forged or promoted by Emile Durkheim, Mircea Iliad, Evans Pritchard, Edward Burnett Tyler, and many others led to the definition of African traditional religion as animism, fetishism, magic, witchcraft, polytheism, shamanism, idolatry, paganism, primitive religion, and ancestor worship. These categories all invented to simplify and position African theology away from its grounding in complex thought. At the same time, because some traditional African religions may be identified as monotheistic in alignment with Western frameworks, doesn't make it more appropriate, intellectual, or morally upright. Hopefully, in the future, we may understand more about the inner dynamics of traditional African religion. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.